Hi, everybody. <laughs> I am Dr. Carrie Nevin of Heartlight Psychological Services. I am a doctor of clinical psychology and a wellness coach certified by the Mayo Clinic. And I created the Let's Talk series to support other people who are advocates for mental health and mental well being. And today we have an incredibly special guest. We have Jacqueline Berger. And I want to talk a little bit about the, you know, how did we get here, Jacqueline, you and I? Um, I interviewed your stepdaughter, Rochelle Weinstein, who is a published author. I think she's on her eighth novel now, incredible. And uh, I had an interest in talking with people who had had music specifically play a role in supporting their mental well being and their mental health. And I asked Rochelle, you know, do you know of anyone? And she said, give me a few days. I want to th really think about this. And a few days later, she contacted me and she said, you know what? I think I have the perfect person. I have my stepmom, Jacqueline Berger. And, you know, I believe music actually saved her. And I think that she would be a perfect person for you to speak with. So that was the origin of how Jacqueline and I got here today. So I would like to give a very special introduction to you, Miss Jacqueline Berger. Thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your story with me and with us. You are so welcome. It is such a pleasure to meet you and to be here in the space together and uh, to talk about my passion music. So fire away. <laughs> All right. Well, can you just start off with a little bit of background, Jacqueline? Um, where was your interest and love of music? Like how, how was that ignited? Like, did you just come in with it? Can you just tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Uh, I, apparently, I did come in with it uh, at an early age and um, w was always there, never really um, quite figured it out why it was there, but it was there. Um, at a very young age, I had asked my parents to get me a, a, a keyboard, a piano. And I, I think back in like the 50s and 60s, I think every household had a, a stand up piano right I mean it was it was like a natural thing for a, a house to have a piano and piano lessons to be given to the children in the house and somehow I'm sorry to say that I don't see that as much anymore it would be nice if there was that same tradition um, yeah. but in any event my parents did did go ahead and buy a keyboard for me and um, I was maybe 10 or 12 at the time and um, uh, unfortunately they never followed up with any lessons so it was quite interesting. And I think because I was the fourth of the four, the, the baby of four children, four older siblings, they were very busy with work and obviously committed to 19 zillion other things dealing with four kids. So it was a little unfortunate for me because I was the last one. And I think they were just tired and it, whatever it, it was what it was. So, but it was always inside me. And um, as I grew up and I got older and got married and had children, it was still a major part of something that I wanted to pursue. Um, it was, uh, it's been a very serendipitous journey for me because really what happened was the, just, I was a hundred, like just compelled to learn how to play an instrument as well as learn how to sing. Um, I think that, uh, um, you know, it, it, life is funny and, and we take different turns and things happen. And, um, during, uh, the around 2006, my stepmother passed away and she um, she had left an indelible mark on me. And I think somehow in the in her way or her spirit or her energy in the afterlife, it was like at that time after she passed away, seeing how my sorrow, because I was just it was when, the first time I'd actually lost, uh, you know, somebody that close to me. Um, and something lit up in my mind where and I think it was her saying to me in her afterlife, you know, I want you to pursue this music career that you've really always had in you. And for some reason, I wasn't able to provide for you while I was here. And I know that sounds a little out there, but I have definitely received messages from her. And I do feel that she uh, is the, the reason why um, I ended up pursuing things at that time. And by then I was, you know, I was not, I was a little older in life and had already had my children. They were already grown up. But something really this dream of mine that I always had. Um, so I I I joined a um I got on, on the on the internet and I started looking for a band that I could just or some other musicians that I could jam with in Miami. 
and came across this this uh, website where you had to fill out this this application, basically a profile of how many times have you gigged, how many you know how often do you practice, and what's your education, what is your background in music, and having had zero of that, I literally just was honest and said zero 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 zero, and then clicked send, figuring this person's never going to reach out to me, and lo and behold, he did, and I don't know what, how, why, but he. He got in touch with me and and I when I said to him, you know, I have no experience whatsoever. Um, I had had some singing lessons, just, you know, a few at the time, um, but no experience actually doing anything in front of an audience. He said, well, I think you might be the perfect person for us because we can work together. And, you know, we like you know, he just felt like there was a good a good uh, energy between us. And I really like have to say it's those kinds of experiences where you when you least expect that almost um, reassures you that it's meant to be. So through him, I was able to join their band. There was a, a wonderful gal, um, the lead singer at the time, and she started coaching me and, and, you know, we would get up and we would practice together and we, it was a weekly thing. And I'd get up, you know, I'd leave my, my apartment at seven o'clock at night and not get home till 11. And it was like, you know, and drive into like West Miami or South Miami or wherever the band was going to be practicing. And, you know, you, it was like, it was an interesting observing myself that I was so compelled to do this in spite of the fact that it was, you know, a little bit of outside my normal, you know, realm of routine. But um, again, it was just that push inside me. And I think it was my mom who was basically saying, you know, you, you need to do this. This is who you are. Mm -hmm. So I did pursue it with them and it was great. And we had a really good time. Um, but I was, I remember the first gig that we had in down in, in Perrine, Florida, and it was just hilarious. I mean, it was just one of these, like, no one goes to this bar, but what, you know, it's always your first gig is always like in a dive bar kind of a situation. I mean, it was just, it was great. But it was really the, the start of, of what um, what was to come for me, which was just to be, you know, just as much as I could pursue an avenue where I could be involved in, in, a, in, a, in a room, in a studio, um, working with other musicians, it just kind of like compelled me to keep going. And, um, and I did. And so I left that band because it was like time for me to move on to another and was then invited to this other band and um, that went great. And I started to get up and do a little bit more and singing, but never didn't know how to play an instrument at this time. I was just basically singing and, and, and having a really good time. Who was a bass player, guitar player, incredible musician, Jose Garcia uh, asked me if, if I would like to go out with him and, and he and I just do our own thing together, maybe form our own band, have a trio with a percussionist, Jose on guitar and me singing. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, we auditioned for, um, the Hard Rock Cafe, the Hard Rock Hotel in Fort Lauderdale. We got, uh, we had a regular gig there every month for a while. I mean, it was, it was, it was so the pleasure to see these people come in and you knew you were engaging and, and they were enjoying the music and the, the, the personal um, uh, um, artistic expression for me to be able to see that and, 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 and see people light up just hearing the music and playing was just so rewarding for me. And I, I guess that's what really what, with the compelling, wasn't just about learning how to play an instrument, which by then I still didn't know how to play an instrument, <laughs> but it was just about the self-expression and being able to sing in front of somebody and not be so nervous, you know? So he and I are still playing together and um, he has taught me so much. And again, it was like, it's all these, these people that came in um, like so serendipitously meant to be yeah. who totally like in my own, cause I'd never been classically trained. I'd never had any ed education other than vocal, vocal, um, lessons at that time. Um, so I then decided, well, okay, I really enjoy this whole, you know, atmosphere of, of the microphone and the music and the audience, um, that I wanted to learn how to play the piano uh, in the piano um, and go back to the time that my parents bought me this keyboard when I was 10 or 12 years old, but never had a lesson. So now we're like fast forwarding 20, 30 years. And I have this piano guy, this piano teacher come to my apartment and start giving me lessons. And he's going to give me lessons traditionally, which is to learn how to read music and, you know, notes on a staff. And, and I remember sitting there going, this is so daunting. I mean, I'll, this is going to take me forever to learn one song, but if I have to figure out where the notes on a staff are and, and this and that. So I had several lessons with him. I did get discouraged 
And I thought, you know, maybe I'm just not meant to know how to play the piano. And so I gave it up and and moved, continued, you know, just singing and and playing music with friends of mine and let them accompany me who who could play the guitar or a keyboard. So uh, fast forward, I was also at the time lucky enough to be working in LA. Uh, I was going back and forth between Miami and Los Angeles at the time. I'm originally from LA. So it was like a home away from home. Mm -hmm. Uh, And um, a very dear friend of mine, who's an entertainment attorney guy by the name of Larry Katz, um, decided he would take on, take me on as a client. I again, got very, very lucky by this gentleman Mm -hmm. saying, you know, I think there's something there for you. Let's see if we can, you know, I'm, I'm, like a nobody and you know but like let's see what she can do and he brought me into uh several uh collaborations with these beautiful young artists in LA where I was able to sit with them and and co-write I did a little bit of writing and I still do some writing and, and lyrics and songs and he uh he allowed me that opportunity to sit with these young artists who um, were kind of looking up to me and in, in my own way, I was looking up to them for, it was like this whole mutual, beautiful arrangement. And again, the, what comes out is the artistic creativity, which is just, it's everything for me. Yeah. It really, it truly is everything to me. And I learned so much from these very young, incredibly talented musicians, singers in LA. And, um, while I was out there, the the urge came back to me again to learn how to play an instrument because I, although I loved to sing, I also had to rely on a you know a, another person to come in to play the instrument for me. Right. I, I could like sing a cappella. So uh, while I was in LA, I, I was uh, inquiring about where I could take maybe guitar lessons because I thought maybe the guitar would be easier to learn than the piano. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I I actually did go to this this great place in, in West LA called McCabe's, um, and it's uh, it's been around since the '60s, and nothing has changed. And literally, you you walk in, and it's just like, it's just it's just fun. It's it creaks, the stairs creak. It's all wood, you know. It's old. There's like an index box, index file where you take out your index card. It's got your name on it, and it has these little pink tickets. And you give the ticket to, you know, it's just not never advanced tech with you know in terms of technology and computers. Nothing. It doesn't exist. But it's it was so the feeling in there, the energy in there. Um, I had learned that. So many rockers, you know, of the the sixties, seventies, eighties, had walked through this place, get their guitars repaired there. Some of Jackson Brown, um, Tom Petty. I mean, it was just like a list of, of of you know legendary musicians. So I again really connected to the energy in that room and in that space. And lucky for me, again, I meet this incredible guitar teacher who. Um, is, you know, so literally it's a 30 minute lesson. I signed up for 10 lessons and I go and I'm, and he said, one of the first things he said to me, which really resonated was you, Jackie, you do not know, you don't need to learn um, to read music, to play the guitar. You just need to, to memorize the chords on the neck of the guitar. And if you can memorize like three or four chords, then slowly you'll be able to memorize and you can play music. And I thought, wow. That's all I need to do. I, I you just teach me the chords because I just I can't read the music. I it was just too uh, wasn't registering. Mm-hmm. So I had these lessons with him. I slowly began to learn how to play the guitar, and I don't know. A light bulb went off, and one day I thought, well, if you can memorize the chords on the neck of a guitar, why can't you memorize the chords on a keyboard? So that was like the thrust to get me, well, maybe I can do that. And then of course it was my dear friend, Larry Katz, who was representing me and said, okay, here's a song that I want you to learn how to play on the piano. And I know you can do it. And it was Casey Musgraves, great song. And I said, I can't do that. He goes, yes, you can. And he just, once again, it was that push. And I have to thank him from the bottom of my heart because he literally is, was the, the, the catalyst for me to sit down and find on the internet, um, various applications, various apps, YouTube videos that teach people like me who can't read music, how to play an instrument wow. by learning how to place your fingers where the finger, you know, finger placement on a, on a keyboard and, and memorizing chords. And all of a sudden it kind of came to me. And so through the help of 
these um, applications is one called Cordify, which I highly recommend. It's C-H-O-R-D-I-F-Y mm -hmm. for a person who wants to learn how to play, who who just wants to learn where to, where to put your fingers, how to do the scales, you know, just the basics. And then from there, um, begin to play some music. So because I had had experience with lyrics and sitting with my guitarist who had the chords written above the lyrics, I figured out, well, if I can, I'll print out the lyric. This is like so old fashioned because now I, I do it on my iPad through <laughs> Unsong and it's like, oh my gosh, it's so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> But I would print out the lyric and then literally go to this app called Cordify and, and through by listening with my ear, figure out where the chord goes on top of the lyric so that as you're playing, you like you'd sing the song and then, you know, and then the chord would come in and, and that's when you would change chords. So, I mean, it started to it started to work for me and, wow. it, you know, through through just practice and and years of like, well, it's literally I learned how to play the piano during the, the COVID pandemic Aww. because the time allotted itself for me to, I, I mean, we were inside, we weren't doing anything. Yeah. And it was around, it was like 2019, 20, 2019 is when I was having the guitar lessons in LA. Mm -hmm. uh, and then 2020 was when the pandemic hit. And that's when I said, you know, what? maybe now's the time for me to really dedicate myself mm -hmm. to learning the passion, the, 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 the need, it was, it was like almost, uh, you know, just like it was there. It was just, I, it had, I had to let it, I had to see how this could evolve. How could, how could this, you know, how could I learn how to do this? Because I know it's there. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, the COVID was a silver lining to dedicate to, to learning how to play music in this way without yeah. reading music. So through, through, you know, just hours of practice and um, I, you know, I, I've pretty much now learned how to play the piano quite well wow. and elevated my game. And to the point now where I, I perform on my own and, um, and I can sing now with a microphone and play the piano and, and be able to engage that audience that I love so much. So I know that you were questioning me about how, what is it, you know, how has it fulfilled me and my, my mental well being? Mm -hmm. It's everything. Mm -hmm. It has been everything for me. Um, I, I, I don't know what I would do if I didn't have this, um, this area of this, this passion that I, that I spend time with time doing almost on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I would fill my time. Otherwise it's, it's really, it's been a gift. It's truly been a gift. I and mean, just to be, you know, to persevere. Yeah. It's an amazing, it's an amazing story. And I get the feeling when you talk about it, Jacqueline, that you, like, you had to get it out. <laughs> you know, like, you just have, I gotta get this out, whatever this is. And when you're playing, you're like running this energy through you that feels so amazing that it's got like your soul print on it and your capacity to like allow yourself to be seen and to be known and available for connection. And oh my gosh, like what a gift, what a gift to you, what a gift to us. And, mm -hmm. and this is something that you are always doing, you're doing currently? Currently, yes, yes. I, um, it's, it's the love of my life besides my children and my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely just, uh, I, I don't know how to describe it. I, you know, I can remember being pregnant with my first daughter and married to my former husband and insisted that we go out. We just moved into this house together, but insisted that we go out and buy a little baby mini grand piano just to put into the living room. And it's because I desperately wanted to play this piano. And um, I got, you know, we got the piano, we put it in the living room. And unfortunately I then had my daughter and, you know, raising her, oh, <laughs> but I would literally, I would dream. I would have dreams at that time when this is going back, you know, 20, 30 years now, I would dream of sitting me I, that I was, I'm sitting at this beautiful grand piano playing it. Wow. And it was frustrating for me because of course, then there was no time to put aside for that as I was raising right. the children and, and working and, uh, but it was like always there. It was always there. Um, so for me at this stage in my life to be, have come full circle and to be able to do it, it's 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 the gift that I was. And I thank my mother, you know, who passed away, who said um, in her after whatever energy thoughts coming to me, 
you need to do this. You know, this is something that there for you. And, and I, I, I'm grateful. I'm so grateful for it. I'm, I'm so grateful that you're here to share this because I think that the message I'm getting is listen to yourself, listen to your heart. When your heart is telling you something, you know, it's there for a reason, like that message, that that push, that like, okay, I need to do this. It's there for a reason. And I think sometimes people get into a game with themselves where it's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. And, you know, performing is kind of a big deal. Like, talk about a yeah. step into vulnerability and allowing yourself to be seen by, you know, the people. It's a big no deal. question. Yeah. And there's no question that, that it's, it, it's, it's the energy is, is, well, it's contagious for me at this point, but it's, it's also, you know, it's, it's a, it's a rush. Um, it's just a, an incredible feeling. Um, I, I have to say, you know, that, you know, you were saying, you know, you, you list, you list listening to your heart, but like, I don't know if you, this happens to you, but oftentimes I'll just get this like thought in my mind and I don't know where it came from. And I've learned as I've gotten a little bit older to really pay attention to that, listen to it because it's coming for a reason. Yes. Um, and, 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 and to not be afraid and, you know, take, take the, the risks and listen, I had some really bad gigs. I have to tell you, I, you know, I, and I think I, must, that must have happened to everybody. No, right? no, there were a couple of really bad ones. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, I'm never going to do this again. You know, I mean, really? sound was terrible. My, I was flat because, you know, the, the guy wasn't paying yeah. attention. I'm, I have these things, ear, you know, these earplugs in my ears and I think I'm sounding great, but I listen to the playback and I sound terrible. And I had an audience there and I'm like, why wasn't anybody telling me you sound so bad? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> but like, yes, that's when you do want to give up. But um, I, again, like if it's, I think it was just there that it was, it, it was never, I was, I would never be able to give it up. I had to pursue it at, at all costs. Truly. Well, and, and you talk about, you know, I was lucky. I was lucky. And I don't know, for me, I'm always feeling like um, coincidences are more like synchronicity, like, you know, like it's meant to be. And because you had this love and it really, I mean, isn't that just the highest vibration, uh, the highest emotion is love. So you can't help but draw in, you know, those other people that are going to help you get from point A to point B. And it just sounds like it happened over and over and over again for you. It was absolutely a steamroll kind of effect. I mean, it just, once it started, it just kept happening and kept going. And I, I know that it was, it was me who was attracting that energy or, or that, that person who, where you have a conversation and, and they're like, yeah, let's see if we can do this. And yeah, let's see and to this day. Carrie, I'm doing that. I'm I'm literally reaching to people here in New York. You know, can you want to come over? Most of the musicians that I've met here don't want to go home and jam because they've been jamming like professionally. But there are these great musicians who want to go home and jam. Uh -huh. And uh, so, you know, it's it's just a constant, um, you know, something that I, I explore constantly to to meet and play with other musicians. And lo and behold, they keep popping up. And you know, finding opportunities to do these things, um, it, it it has been it has been really the greatest joy of my life to be able to have finally learned how to play the piano, wow. even though I'm self taught. And let me tell you, I'm very self taught. But it doesn't sound bad. It sounds really pretty. And um, when I can play with another musician where they're playing another instrument, and the timing, and the listening, and the hearing, and it all comes together, and it sounds beautiful. Um, I feel really blessed that I can do it, you know, that I've kind of figured it out. And and then, you know, you, you come across musicians who have the same story. Is there, or has there been an instance where you were challenged emotionally in your life that you feel music was like a lifesaver for you? Is there anything that you would feel comfortable sharing with regard to that? Well, um, there have been, there have been very, there have been quite a few. Um, so to, to give you a little bit more background, um, I never knew either of my parents, my mother who raised me was my stepmother. 
Um, and she had married my father when I was 16 months old. So she met me when I was six months old. Um, my biological mother passed away when I was two weeks old, not even two weeks, excuse me, nine days old of an unknown brain trauma. So and, and I know, and she was a singer and a dancer. She and and yeah, so it was Where there. It from, I mean, I mean, I mean, there big time. Downloaded. I, I feel like had she been there for me, I would have definitely had those early childhood lessons and been able to really pursue things from the start. Um, but she wasn't, and but I did have this amazing stepmother who who raised me, but she didn't connect to the the music for me, you know, so much. Um, I then found out. And, and later on in life, many, many years later, that the father who raised me was not my father, unbeknownst to me. So that was a whole other incredible story. Um, so I think, you know, retrospectively, um, when I think about, you know, the, the impact that it had, it, 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 you know, it has its, it comes later, because if you don't know, you don't know, right? You just, right. You, I, I often wondered, you know, a lot of things and we things how I even found out was also very serendipitous as my <laughs> older sister who who was who was the one who compelled me to do the DNA and everything she she was convinced that I wasn't the same father that 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 my three you know not only physical differences but you know I I really had this music in me and so did my brother I had an older brother who unfortunately passed away and my sister did too I've had quite a few losses I'm so sorry, my goodness. And I, I, I do think that that losing them and those losses, especially at such an early age, um, you know, it, 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 I guess having not had the choice to just give up, you know, I had to survive, right? I mean, there was things that I, I had to move on in my life, and I wanted children, and I wanted to get married, all the all the traditional things, and um, but it was also just you know never giving up and um, just to continue to. You know, that's a, you know, you know, to get from point A to point B for, for the important things to raising your children, you know, having a roof over your head, working, having a, you know, you know, income to be able to provide, blah, blah, blah. It also applied to me from this, this, this desire to play music and, and it wasn't so much for anybody else, but for me. Yeah. Uh, and it turned out to be like, uh, the best therapy I could have ever given myself. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and what a way to honor, you know, your family of origin to, you know, to be able to live and, and feel the joy and channel it and then be able to demonstrate it and give it back to other people and uplift them. You said, you know, to, to watch the connection with you in the crowd, that's just something that's beyond amazing. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, those moments are still so vivid in my memories, um, especially when we were performing at the Hard Rock in Fort Lauderdale, because there, you know, you're, we're in the lobby lounge, you know, mm -hmm. and so people are walking in and out and there's disabled people in wheelchairs and they, they're stopping and they're like taking that time out of their, whatever they're doing, they're on vacation and you know, they're literally there, you know, in Fort Lauderdale and, you know, like could be anywhere, but they're stopping in this lounge to listen to this girl that they don't know who she is this guy who's playing guitar and our percussionist who was on the bongos or whatever he was playing at the time and stop and and they'd smile and then you're hearing their applause and and do another one and we would take you know we would take requests and it was just it was just joyful it was yeah. just joyful and it really having you know I kind of bringing it all back together with the losses that I have experienced as a as a since I was a baby um having that kind of joy and, and maybe also, you know, just the recognition, you know, the, the um, confirmation and some, to some degree that I could, that I could actually self be, you know, ex be expressive in this very creative, intimate way. Mm -hmm. And to see the response, it, it, it did. I mean, it just melted my heart. It really did. I really enjoyed seeing especially the people that would like literally stop and sit and from every walk of life, every background. Mm -hmm. And it was just so joyful. Uh, I love it. Um, you know, I, the whole reason I wanted to do this series is because I feel like we are all wired for connection. 
and you you can kind of see what happens when people don't have it and how they can get lost and how they can go dark and so it's such a delight for me to see how you have put your own soul print on how you allow yourself to be seen and connected to how you you know connect to others what is something you would tell another who maybe is thinking about like i don't know i want to pursue this music thing but i'm not sure like is there anything that any words of wisdom that you could share based on your own amazing experience and journey through this yes uh don't give up uh yes just take the risk go for it there is nothing more gratifying and more fulfilling if that is a dream that you have and you know maybe you don't have the resources to go to the berkeley school of music or have you know a, an instructor come to your home or go out for lessons there's the, the beauty that of the world that we live in today is the technology and what's available to us online yes. had listen there's no question that if i didn't have the tools online i wouldn't do i wouldn't be able to do it mm. it's there it's it's there it's accessible um you know i i if it's there for you, don't let anything stand in your way. Give it, give it all you can. Take the risk. Go for it. You know, listen, I know that I sucked at times. <laughs> and I went to the studio and I would listen and I go, oh my goodness, this is just awful. But you know, you 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 just roll with it. Just roll with it because this is how. You know, who was it who said to me, you know, if, if you don't make a mistake or something, you know, it's not, you're not human or you don't, right. you know, you up to, this is, this is part of the human experience. Yeah. Why should you stop? You know, who cares? Just continue to go, you know, go for it. Yeah. Um, yes, and I'm like, yeah. You just have, I mean, but in all honesty, thank goodness for, for the internet and for all of the things that are available to the, to the, the self learner such as myself. Uh, and you really demonstrated that. And you just had to have a passion for it. I mean, nobody else would do it if they didn't really have a passion to like, you know, understand it. And, 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 not, you know, it, you came to it later in life. So age should never, ever be a factor, right? Definitely. You're never Absolutely. too old to learn. No, you're never, ever too old. And for the most part, I'm doing this because it's for me. It's really not for anybody else. I think, you know, it's it just for me to even in, to sit alone in my apartment and just play music, sing out loud. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's joyful. Um, it, it, there's so much passion for me where it comes to music and and honestly, the fulfillment by itself, just that that's another thrust that I would say to somebody, you know, you're, the fulfillment that you'll get, the rewards of giving it your all of really just trying to go for it you know give yourself five minutes a day like my guitar teacher told me if that's all you've got if you can do it for five minutes a day eventually you'll begin to retain mm -hmm. stuff and, and it'll come together it comes together if it's in you you know yeah and to pay attention to what's in you whether, you know, it's art or, you know, wanting to do the trapeze or like whatever, whatever that desire is, like pay right. attention. Or, you know, whatever, whatever your passion is, is, you know, it's really, it has to come from yourself because sometimes we don't have the support. You know, sometimes I, in my situation, I didn't have the support of my parents. They were busy. I mean, yeah. you know, it was, it was, uh, I don't blame them. I mean, you know, they did the best that they could. Um, but I guess, you know, at some point, if it's so strong within you, you if there's a will, there's a way. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, the universe kind of like responds. It's like, you know, the law of attraction. You yes. put it out there, put it out there so much and stuff starts coming back and it's positive and it feels good. And it's like, okay, so this is good, you know? I, so, yeah. I'm, just I, I find you to be a, an amazing example of the human spirit and the just I'm I'm gonna do this and I'm not gonna let the fact that I didn't have the support when I was younger for various reasons it doesn't matter right now is really what matters and, I mean and you can do it 
Uh, listen, I have to be honest with you. If I could do it, anyone could do it. Okay. Oh, no, right. we have a piano. We have, we have a piano. Um, and my boys have played uh, since they were young. And we have a baby grand in the living room downstairs. And Hi. you may be inspired me. Like, I'm like, I don't, I cannot musical. You know what I mean? But I'm like, you're kind of igniting a little bit. Like, why don't you just go down into stairs and just sort of like tinker around and see what. I can do put on, put on a YouTube video, learn how to play the C chord and then play it word. over and over and over again. <laughs> and then okay. learn, that one, learn how to play the F chord <laughs> and then play that over and over. It's truly, it's, it, it, you know, it's about the passion. It really is. If that's what you want to do, you can do it. Wow. Jacqueline Berger. I am really impressed and I'm just so grateful that you have spent this time with me talking about your life and your passion. And I know that this is going to ignite others' passions uh, for whatever they're choosing to do. And you've just been a real gift to me today. And I, I just so appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking. Thank you. Likewise, and, all of that right back at you. Honestly, you. a pleasure. Thank you.